very good morning students we are discussing the course cs8603 distributed systems and i am meenakshi assistant professor working in rohini college of engineering and technology and today the topic is models of deadlock it comes under unit 3 so the objectives of this video presentation are to know about the different types of models of deadlocks and for each model we are learning about some examples so the topic is models of deadlocks so the models of deadlocks are explained based on their hierarchy so assume we have five processes among them pa pb pc pd are passive processes and we have only one process active process which is named as pe that is requesting the resource okay so first we have to know what are all the models are there for detecting the deadlock the one is single resource model the second one and model third one or model fourth one p out of q model and the last one unrestricted model okay so one by one we are going to see so the first one is single resource model so as the name implies a process can request at most one resource okay it can one outstanding request for only one unit of a resource so the maximum out degree of any node in the wait for graph should be 1 it cannot exceed the value 1 because every process can have one outstanding request okay so how can we detect the deadlock means the presence of a cycle indicates we have a deadlock in the wfg that is a wait for graph okay so what is cycle so here we have the cycle pd then pe pc pb again pd we are starting from the node pd and again we are reaching to the same node pd so this is called cycle pd pc pb and again pd okay so this cycle indicates we have the deadlock in this model so the second model is and model so hope you remember the logic gate and okay so if we have two ones then only we will get the answer as one so if any one of the input is zero then the output is also zero so the same logic is applied here in the and model the passive process becomes active only after a message from each process in its dependent set has arrived that is we have to get the permission from each and every process in the set that is the meaning okay so in and model a process can request more than one resource simultaneously so this is the difference between the previous model single resource model where the process can request at most one but here the process can request more than one resource simultaneously but when can we satisfy the request we have to get the permission from all okay we have to get the resources from we have to get the or uh, we have to get all the resources okay then only we can start the process so the out degree of the node in the wfg that is the wait for graph in and model it can be more than 1 because it can request more than one resource simultaneously so the value can be more than one how can you find out a deadlock again the presence of a cycle in the wait for graph indicates we have the deadlock in the and model so each and every node in the wait for graph is called as the and node okay so here we have the cycle pd pc pb again pd so it indicates we have the deadlock okay and again we have one more cycle pb pa uh, no we don't have that cycle pb pa pd pc and again pb okay once again pb pa pd pc and again pb so again it's a cycle 
so it indicates we have a deadlock in the AND model and the third model is OR model so like AND model here also the process can request multiple resources simultaneously but the difference between the AND model and OR model is in AND model we have to get all the requested resources but here if any one of the requested resources granted then you can satisfy the request you don't need to get a grant permission from all the resources okay so if any one of the resources is obtained then you can satisfy the request you can start the process that's the difference and one more difference between our model and an model is the presence of a cycle in the wait for graph of an OR model does not imply the deadlock. Okay. Here, the presence of a NOT indicates the deadlock. So, note down the difference. The presence of a cycle does not imply a deadlock in OR model, but the presence of a NOT indicates a deadlock. Okay. So, how will you find out a deadlock in OR model? The process BI is blocked if it has a pending R request to be satisfied. Okay. So, for every blocked process, we have one associated set. In that set, we have so many number of processes and this set is called as a dependent set. Okay. So, a process can move from idle state to active state. If it receives a grand message, from any one of the process in its dependent set. Okay, we don't need to get a grand message from all the processes in the dependent set. If we get a grand message from any one of the process, then we can move from ideal state to active state. Okay, so the process is permanently blocked if it never receives the grand message from any of the processes in its dependent set. So, in short, you can say that the process is deadlocked okay, if the following conditions are met. The first condition is each of the process is the set S is blocked. Each of the process in the set S is blocked. Okay, every process in the set is blocked. And the second condition is the dependent set for each process in S is again the subset of yes and third condition we don't receive any grand message from any process that is no grand message is in transist between any two process in the set okay so this is the knot which indicates we have a deadlock in our model so see the diagram so here we have a cycle p1 p2 okay p3 p4 p5 p6 P8, P9 and again P1. So in the AND model, we have the cycle. So it indicates the deadlock. But in OR model, okay, the presence of a cycle does not imply the deadlock. So we need NOT. Okay. So C, we don't have NOT. That is, we have some other processes P5, P7, P10. So you can receive the grand message from one of these processes. To get the resource so you can release from the deadlock so we don't have a deadlock in the or model since we don't have the knot okay see the second diagram so again p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 p8 p9 and p1 so it is a cycle so we have the deadlock in an model similarly we have a knot see p5 p7 p10 and again to P9. It is also forming one cycle. Okay. So, this indicates the knot. So, we have the deadlock in R model. Okay. So, in the R model, the cycle is a necessary condition, but a knot is a sufficient condition. The fourth model is P out of Q model. So, this is a variation of AND model. So here you have to obtain P available resources from a pool of Q resources. That's why it's named as P out of Q model. Okay. So this model, every request can be expressed in the and or model and vice versa. 
For example, the AND request for P resources can be stated as P out of Q, where P and Q are same. Okay. And R request for P resources can be stated as P out of 1. Okay. So, this is a P out of Q model. And the last, here also the NOT indicates the deadlock. Okay. The cycle does not imply a deadlock. The unrestricted model. So, no assumptions are made regarding the underlying structure of resource request. We have only one assumption. The deadlock is stable, is made and hence it is the most general model. Okay. So, in this model, only one assumption what we have made is the deadlock is stable. Okay. So, this model is used to know about the properties of the problem. Okay. And they are separated from the underlying distributed computation. That is whatever the computation we are using. Whether it can be a message passing, a shared memory, synchronous communication, asynchronous communication. It won't consider this. It concerns about the properties of the problem. Okay. So once again unrestricted model. So we don't have any assumptions regarding the underlying structure of resource request like the AND model like the OR model we don't have any assumptions okay so this model is used to know about the properties of the problem that is the main thing okay so with this we have concluded the models of deadlock thank you